And today is, in fact, the big day. It's sequester day. Woohoo! The president has until 11.59 tonight to implement the cuts, and he could sign them into effect at any moment. Now, you might think the lawmakers would be working furiously to avoid these dreaded cuts, but actually, they took the day off. Most of Congress left the Beltway before the long weekend. We did manage to find one congressman who's still in town. And joining me now is Congressman Marlon Stutzman. He is a Republican from Indiana. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Hi, Melissa. Good to be with you this what, afternoon. Yes. What do you think about the message that so much of Washington has gone home? And here, you know, you look at the bottom of the screen, you see the deadline is fast approaching. Yeah, you know, Melissa, this is really unfortunate because this has been, uh, the sequester has been around for more than a year, and uh, the House Republicans have actually passed two separate bills to deal with these across-the-board cuts. And so with the, uh, the way the legislative process works, the timeline really ran out uh, yesterday or the day before because by the time you send a bill back and forth between the House and the Senate, it just wouldn't be possible to do anymore. I think it's unfortunate. The president really should, be, should have been leading on this uh, a long time time ago. Uh, we had already delayed the sequester from the beginning of the year when the tax cliff deal took place on New Year's Day. Yeah. And so we've already extended it two months already. Tell me, what do you make of this? The president said today he announced that as long as the continuing resolution sticks to the previously agreed spending targets, he would agree to sign it. And some people are interpreting that to mean um, that he wouldn't insist on higher tax revenue or uh, that he would as a condition of signing it. What do you think? Well, uh, you know, the president continues to go around the country talking about tax increases. And, you know, he just got a tax increase uh, two months ago uh, on New Year's Day uh, when Americans saw 2% more go out of their checks uh, to, uh, to Washington, D.C. There's also an income uh, tax increase as well that uh, uh, the top tax bracket's going to see. And the president continues to talk about tax increases. I, I don't know exactly um, how sincere he is about that. I think at some point he's going to see that uh, we're cutting two cents. But if he signs every dollar, the continuing yeah. resolution, does that mean that he's agreeing to these spending cuts without more, that he's, you know, without more revenue? Yeah, I mean, in a sense, he would be agreeing to doing that if he signs a continuing resolution with the lower number. Uh, again, this is two cents out of every dollar that Washington spends this year, and at some point, he's going to have to be realistic and uh, realize that uh, we cannot continue to be irresponsible with taxpayer dollars. I think it's also important that we remember that uh, as we have gone in through the budgeting process, the Senate hasn't passed a budget in four years, right. and so this is part of uh, the, the, the time has come when cuts are really going to happen and the president's been talking about you know the sky falling it's just not the case no and it doesn't seem like the public is that nervous about us going over the cliff this time around i mean the recent fox news poll that just came out said that um, how will the country get its budget deficit under control fifty seven percent said that they think and, and that was the, the biggest category it will only happen with automatic cuts only twenty nine percent said that they think lawmakers can actually get it done how do you interpret those numbers if the vast majority almost sixty percent say we need these automatic cuts I think they get it. They saw that the super committee failed uh, that was created by this particular bill that had the sequester backing up the super committee. I think they've seen Washington continue to govern from crisis to crisis. The president really has been unable to catch that big deal that he, when he had an opportunity in 2011. And so we continue to muddle through from this crisis to crisis. I think the American people are saying, you know what, this is the way Washington is working. Yeah. We don't like it, but we get it. And uh, we really need leadership out of the White House and you know he's not communicating to the leadership in uh, in the House or to the Senate they're having these brief conversations every once in a while but it's really not going to get the work done so until they sit down and we have the broad next? conversation what happens next what can people at home expect yeah, well, it's gonna, it really depends on the president and the, uh, the White House on what happens next. Uh, the agencies are going to have some latitude on where they make cuts. But, you know, I had, I had a constituent uh, write and ask me if we're going to see uh, meat inspectors laid off. I, you know, that's up to the president. It doesn't have to happen, though. We, yeah. he, he does not have to allow for uh, traffic controllers to go home or to be furloughed. There's yeah. plenty of waste in Washington that could be there cut. There are other things to cut. We don't need planes to fall yeah. out of the sky. Congressman, thanks so much Absolutely. for joining us. Have a good weekend. You bet. Thanks. You too.